Hello, and welcome to this week's edition of To Canonize or Not To Canonize. Today, we will be talking about John Baptist Purcell. John Baptist Purcell is from Ireland, Mallow, Ireland, where he was born January 26th of 1800. When he was 18, John emigrated to the United States to come learn and uh, obtain an education for the ordination of priesthood. He came by himself, not with family, so it was kind of a tough transition. His first job was as, was as a tutor for a small but very wealthy family. He then later joined Mount St. Mary's Seminary in Emmonsburg, which is still an active university today. At Mount St. Mary's, John was both a student and a teacher. He was teaching Latin and arithmetic while he studied for his preschool. After studying for four years, John packed his bags and enrolled at the Sulpician Seminary at Paris, where he would continue his studies and eventually be ordained by the Archbishop of Paris in Notre Dame in May 20th of 1826. Following his ordination, John came back to the New World and taught for six years at Emmersburg and eventually became the president. On September of 1832, sad news came that the first Bishop of Cincinnati, Edward Fenwick, had passed away. At the time, it was customary to send a list of three nominees to replace a bishop to Rome. This list was known as a Turner. The Turner was created by every bi active bishop in the United States. Purcell was nominated in that Turner. On August 2nd, 1833, the 33-year-old John Purcell was appointed as the second bishop of Cincinnati. Now, this presented a challenge for Purcell, as a majority of the citizens in Ohio were non-Catholics. Coming from Maryland, since Cincinnati's diocese was minuscule compared to the well-established Archdiocese of Baltimore, which was one of the largest and most successful. I found myself badly disappointed on arriving here, Purcell claimed, but the exuberant optimist saw the situation as motivation and thrived. When he first arrived at Cincinnati, the diocese had 14 priests, 16 churches, one school, and one seminary. During Purcell's time as bishop and archbishop of the diocese, they saw incredible change. When Purcell died, the diocese had 480 priests, 510 churches, two newspapers, three colleges, three seminaries, six hospitals, 30 schools, and about 24 orphanages. Purcell did not have an easy time accomplishing these goals. At the time, nativism was very prevalent, and Catholic immigrants flocked into Cincinnati and the Midwest. Now, Protestants and nativists really did not like this. So they did all they could to shut down Catholicism from influencing the popular belief as they thought Catholics were sent by the Pope to overthrow the Republic. During the pre-Civil War period, the Ohio River was separated by pro-slavery and anti-slavery advocates. At this time, Purcell was the acting Archbishop of Cincinnati, and just south of the river, there was John Scoggin, Bishop of Louisville. Purcell did not believe in slavery and saw it as morally wrong and he was not afraid to preach his beliefs during those unstable times. Bishop Spalding urged his fellow Catholics to maintain a strict public neutrality, as he did not want the church to interfere or go against the state. But Purcell did not take this kindly, and went beyond not only favoring anti-slavery, but he took the Union side during the war. So, Purcell maybe did favor uh, the Union, and this man right here, Abraham Lincoln, which, I don't know, might not seem so Catholic, because if you think about it, war, killing people, not the best thing to do. And he was arguing another Catholicism. But, Priscilla is correct. In the eyes of God, slavery is wrong. It's morally wrong. So he was right. So, as you can see, Priscilla loved to argue. Argued against Protestants, Catholics, nativists, you name it. He got his point across. And a very well-respected man, very educated man helped shape the Midwest and what is now American Catholicism. Unfortunately, his bishop tenure ended in a pretty bad note, as the Cincinnati diocese had some financial problems, which led to health problems, which led to four strokes, which led to, unfortunately, his death. So, America, you tell me, is Purcell to be canonized or not to be canonized?